Billionaire tech executive Elon Musk danced onto the stage as he joined Donald Trump at a campaign rally in Pennsylvania on Saturday. The CEO of SpaceX and Tesla who also purchased X, Musk joined Trump in Butler at the site where the former president survived an assassination attempt in July. Musk said, this will be the last election, if Trump doesn't win. Wearing a cap with the, Make America Great Again, slogan of Trump's campaign, Musk appeared to acknowledge the foreboding nature of his remarks. As you can see I'm not just MAGA I'm dark MAGA, he said. It was the first time that Musk joined one of Trump's rallies and was evidence of their growing alliance in the final stretch of the presidential election. So many different great things. Where, the, where is he? Come on up here, Elon. He created the first major American car company in generations and his rocket company is the only reason we can now send American astronauts into space. Come here. Take over, Elon. Yes, take over. Hi, everyone. As you can see, I'm, I'm not just MAGA, I'm dark MAGA. According to the government, 1.2 million people have been driven from their homes as a result of the intensified strikes. Medline, originally a shipping company, has fitted out a cargo ship offering trips across the Mediterranean Sea to Mersin in Turkey. Tickets cost $250 a person and the trip takes 12 to 15 hours. It is offering a new route for thousands of people trying to escape. Only the local airline company Middle East Airlines is operating flights out of the country, leaving thousands of people scrambling to flee for safety. Mohammed Al Youssef is the owner of Medline, he said around 400 passengers were leaving on the ship on Saturday. He said the company is offering up to four trips a week. <laughs> وهذا الموضوع اللي نحن فيه ما بي ما بيطمن يعني صدقني يعني لبنان حلو نحن عايشين فيه صرنا 50 60 سنه وعايشين فيه بس ما اسمع في وضع ما في منو منيح الوضع ابدا يعني هي بالحل ومن حل بس شو الواحد بيعمل ما عندك غير خيار في سيء وفي اسوء شو بتعمل بين السيء والاسوء لانه ما في طيران ما في طيران سالك على طول وبدك تحجز بعد جمعه ولا بعد جمعتين وبعدين بيرجع بيكنسلوا لك اياه لانه ما في محلات علماء كثير عم تطلع On October the 4th, the Russian kamikaze drone Shahed flew into Belarus and exploded near the Mozir oil refinery. The head of the Center for Countering Disinformation under the Security Council of Ukraine, Andriy Kovalenko, reported this. 
The Belarusian resource Belaruski Gayon reported about another incident with Shahed. According to it, the settlement of Kalinkovichi was shaken by a powerful explosion. The drone first flew into the territory of Ukraine, after which it crossed the Belarusian border and flew about 40 kilometers before being eliminated. In Kalinkovichi, a kamikaze drone of the Shahed type exploded. It is unknown whether it detonated or was shot down by air defense forces. The Belarusian channel wrote, Kovalenko reported that the Russian armed forces target could have been the Mozir oil refinery, one of the largest oil refineries in Belarus. The Russians are trying to carry out a provocation near the Mozir oil refinery in order to blame Ukraine and demand action from Lukashenko, Kovalenko wrote. Both the Kremlin and Minsk are silent about the explosion of Shahed. However, against the backdrop of the current events, the head of the Russian FSB accused NATO of planning to attack Belarus and threatened aggression against the Baltic countries and Moldova. Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko also made an urgent statement. He called on the Ukrainian authorities to urgently negotiate peace with Moscow and even promised assistance in post-war reconstruction. Experts say that the Shaheds flying to Belarus are not an accident. Putin is sending Lukashenko a warning. Popular telegram channel Sieve of Socrates drew attention to the fact that Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko has recently begun to waver on the issue of Ukraine. He makes statements that contradict the general line of the Putin regime. For the Kremlin, such rhetoric is absolutely unacceptable. Belarus, as an instrument of warfare, is also assigned a certain role in the strategy of Russia. There, they are very suspicious of the current rhetoric of Minsk, which contains at least three seditious moments. We are talking about a peaceful Belarus, i.e. a refusal to be involved in Russian military adventures. Then Lukashenko admits the presence of adequacy in the actions of the Ukrainian leadership. Finally, Putin's most painful point is touched. He is not eternal either. He must prepare for departure. In the Russian Federation, they immediately made the appropriate conclusions about the doublethink of the Belarusian leadership and began to urgently take measures to urgently draw the de facto semi-occupied satellite into the orbit of Russian military algorithms. The resource writes, It is emphasized that the Kremlin really does not like the vacillations of the Lukashenko in connection with which they began to put intense pressure on Belarus, including through the Shaheds.